hi, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our third official Zcash Foundation Audiovisual Club meetup. I'm really excited about this one. We have a chance to really nerd out on some of the, the hardware and the software behind making all of the content that, that we're collaborating on here. Uh, the timing is, is perfect because it's coming right at the uh, right after Zcon Voices, which is the first Zcon Voices event presented by Zcash Foundation, and this one was presented by Zcash Brazil. They did an awesome job with organizing the event, and Dan was down there uh, operating the live stream, producing the live stream. He did a wonderful job, and uh, the video really shows. So thanks, Dan. That was fantastic work on that. Uh, and Thanks. we're gonna we're gonna take advantage of this of this meetup this space to talk about how we did it uh, how Dan did it specifically um, we had some help from the Zcash Brazil team from Vito specifically thank you Vito for that and uh, at the same time we had because this was a, a live stream we are trying to really enable the remote audience in as many ways as possible to access this content. Uh, and so we have John here to help uh, to, to tell us about a method that he's developed in order to l translate live video content from any source language to, uh, to any other language that, that we can translate to using these tools. So while we were live streaming Zcon Voces in Portuguese and Spanish, we had, uh, we had Discord on our phones and we were watching this live translation sort of subtitles come through in English. I thought it was really interesting. I think there's a lot of potential there for uh, for jobs, for work, for ambassadors and and other folks to to connect this content to the international communities uh, with Zcon voices and with Zcons that are in English as well in the future. So very excited about that. Um, so let's uh, start this off with the typical tech rundown of what we're doing for this live stream. We're meeting here in Discord. I'm uh, capturing it over into OBS, just as we did before. We'll kind of show how this is done a little later. Dan will, will highlight it and share his screen so you can see how uh, OBS works a little bit. Um, and then I'm broadcasting out to free to Z using the, the virtual camera. And we're actually broadcasting to YouTube as well to a private video so no one can watch it, but I want that as the backup because last month, I recorded a video without any sort of audio. So I've got all the recordings going in all the places now. Oh, except, of course, free to see. Hit record there. Uh, one more backup. All right. So um, without much further ado, I think that I'd rather just kick it over to Dan, and we can, we can start talking about uh, some of this technical work that went into producing this into this live stream and uh, the equipment that was used, and if you could talk about our process of, like, acquiring the equipment and where is it now take us out yeah. take it away dan sure let me start by uh, so i am sharing the screen i don't know at, at least for the recording like if that's outside of the grid so people can actually see it but i have the the little flow chart here that i've set up are we uh, just to confirm we're good everybody can see that and looks good okay cool so I guess I'll start by saying uh, I appreciate the kind words that Ryan said. I absolutely could not have done it without the support of the AV Club. Everybody was amazing. Uh, we did a bunch of tests leading up to the event, and it helped build my confidence to be able to um, execute in Brazil. And it was absolutely amazing working with the Brazil team and everybody on site, in addition to everybody from the AV Club uh, virtually. And Overall, the event went absolutely amazing and the stream turned out really good. And we have some cool things planned to do uh, with the content going forward. So um, with that said, I, I'll, I can jump right into some of the technical things. Um, we ordered some gear, you know, Ryan and I, we did a bunch of talking leading up to the event and we ordered some gear and I had it shipped to my house and we were able to do a ton of tests, like I mentioned. Um, with my cat as the star of the test event. And um, yeah, so basically once the gear got to my place and we were able to set everything up, um, we were able to basically recreate that in person. Obviously that comes with its own challenges. We had to have you know backups of certain things and uh, different varieties of, of ways, you know, not knowing how the venue was exactly set up and you always have to be aware of like where the camera will be 
what kind of cables can get you to the spot where I was set up with the computer and, you know, working with the, uh, the venue technicians and, and all that jazz that comes along with any uh, uh, live event. But once we got there and set up for the day before and tested some things, um, where we ended was in a really good place. And I put this flow chart together to kind of walk everybody through what it actually looked like. So I don't think anybody can see my cursor. So I'll be clear about which steps I'm talking about as I go, but starting on the far left, um, we used uh, starting on the left is the camera, which was a Sony FDR AX 53 uh, handy cam. Really nice uh, consumer camcorder that did exactly what we needed it to do. Um, it was set up on a tripod and a tripod head. Uh, the brand of that is iFootage. Really good quality um, products. And so the camera was set up all the way up top of the venue underneath the projector at front of house. And um, inside that camera, we decided to do internal recording as, as a backup just in case. And go, moving to the right, um, we have micro HDMI out of the camera. Uh, the other end of that cable is full-size HDMI. That goes into this conversion device, uh, HDMI in. This conversion device um, is called a Blackmagic um, Black Design micro convertible, uh, micro converter, excuse me. And out of, that had to be powered locally uh, next to the camera. Out of that, um, you have what's uh, called an SDI cable or a coax cable. This allows us to pass high quality footage over longer distances than would be able to through an HDMI. So that was a 100 foot cable, um, which allowed me to extend from the camera around the venue into um, a front of house booth where I was set up next to um, some of the uh, in venue participants and or, um, technicians. So going back, um, out of conversion device, SDI cable, it gets us extended. Then you would go SDI into a, what is called a capture card. This was the same brand, uh, Blackmagic Design. Those are called Ultra Studio recorders. Out of that recorder, you do USB-C into... Um, this high-end USB-C hub, we had to be sure that this hub could um, handle multiple inputs with one strong output going out to my computer. So I think I'll pause there. That was one flow of a feed, specifically the camera feed, without audio. Um, the next feed would have been the laptop that was running the slides. This was set up next to me in the booth. Stan, could I interrupt in that, real quick? Please, I yeah. I just want to mention that if anyone has any questions, type them into the chat um, and we'll get to that at the end rather than uh, yeah. rather than asking questions during it. And also, before we continue on to the second feed here, uh, I wanted to mention that John has this auto translate and transcription function running, correct, in a, in a Discord chat? You're muted, John. Yeah, um, it was running. Uh, at first, oh, okay. and then Chrome crashed. Actually, okay. this particular device was the one I used earlier, and I need to clean Chrome out. But All right. well, um, we can yeah. get back to that. I just figured I'd let people know they could jump over and check it out while while Dan is doing the rest of his presentation. But uh, yeah, so watch for that. Sorry, Dan. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. And no worries. Go with yeah, input please, number two. And, yeah, and again, um, as Ryan said, yeah, put questions in the chat or, you know, I don't mind being interrupted at all to um, clarify something. Um, okay, so feed number two, going back to the left, um, down one row, so to speak, uh, was a laptop with slides. Um, plugged into that is a wireless slide uh, clicker or changer um, where you just go into USB for that. And then the uh, speakers down on the stage were able to change their own slides. So this is an important piece of gear that allowed um, the slides that are being changed in person to be synced with the feed that I was inputting into OBS. And so similarly to the original feed for the camera, you know, it, it, it finds its way through multiple um, cables, conversions, etc. So going to the right from the laptop was a, a standard HDMI cable. 
going into what's known as the HDMI splitter, which is basically just a way to um, take feeds and split them separately to multiple locations. Out of that splitter, um, which was taking in the slides, one of the outputs went to the venue projector, and one of the outputs went to the same capture card, uh, or the same type of capture card, but its own individual, uh, so, so they could run separately, both rec standard HDMI inputs to out of that splitter. Then out of uh, the HDMI capture card, same thing, USB-C cable. Um, we had to make sure, just a little side note on these cables, you know, they have to be, you know, not like your standard, let's say, iPhone cable. You know, these were cables that were able to pass um, high-quality um, content th through them into this hub. So now on the right here, we're, we'll start from the hub. You're, we have two inputs one being the slide, one being the camera. The third input into the hub, also USB-C, was the audio interface. So set up next to me in the booth was the local technician who worked at the venue. He had an audio board that was running all the audio for the venue, but also I was able to then take two program feeds, um, one going into my audio interface, which was then USB-C into the hub, same as the other two, and one into our external audio recorder that I had running side by side as a backup. So if I were to pause there, just for clarity, it's everything going into the hub, which then makes its way into the computer and OBS, backup recording on the camera internally, and backup audio recording in an in audio um, recorder. So then um, this going is back to the hub, just, sorry, yeah. once again, I'm going to interrupt. This is, uh, so what we're talking about specifically is for a conference style setup where you have the camera pointed at the stage and the laptop is the presentations. Um, the audio yeah. is coming from, like, like it says, the venue audio board. The same setup could be used for like a video game live stream. And you simply, yeah. it's exactly the same wiring and you simply point the camera at yourself. The laptop with the slides becomes your game system. And mm -hmm. the project, the venue projector is now your your television at home, and uh, mm -hmm. this is with a with an actual physical game system. You can do this with your computer as well. It's a bit different, but uh, and then and then you have those. You have the camera that's you, the the game system going into the two capture cards, and then you don't need have the video audio board. Instead, you'll want the your headset audio and the game audio coming in. So the audio configuration is a little bit different, but you can see how this setup is versatile to do different kinds of live streams. I just wanted to point that out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all, all very similar and uses, all, you know, any type of gear that does this. These are the brands that we decided on that we believed would do the job and, and last. Um, but, you know, there, there is other options out there as well that do similar things. Um, so let's see, let's jump back to, so now we're at the stage where we have three things coming into the hub, one being the camera, one being the slides, and one being program audio. Out of that hub, I have one USB-C cable going into my computer. On that computer, OBS is running, and also on my second USB-C input on my computer is a USB-C to Ethernet adapter, which allowed me to take direct internet from the, what the venue was running. So we knew that OBS could run uh, solidly throughout the whole day instead of over Wi-Fi. That worked really well. Um, I can go over, we'll end up sharing a list of all this gear specifically in the brands, but this, this USB-C adapter was the same brand as these cables and we were confident that, that they would do what we needed them to do. Um, and then out of the computer, um, we we would go um, out to YouTube, and that this was Ryan's realm. Um, I don't know if we want to pause. I could kind of change up here and show. Um, you know, this is this is what it looked like at the at my desk, right? So you can see in the back here. You probably can't see my cursor, but all the way in the back is the US uh, HDMI splitter. As we come forward towards the computer is the two capture cards. And then next is the USB-C hub. And then following that is the ethernet adapter all going in. You can see the computer running OBS here on the right. It's also clean and shiny. 
I guess is I would, <laughs> with the explanation, like your diagram was really nice and clean, but with seeing a picture, I would expect like a rat's nest of wires and all of this, oh, but uh, it's real nice because yeah. the capture cards match. They're both the same. They're easy to identify and uh, you got yep. a real sleek USB hub. I highly recommend yeah. not using the same USB hub for your HDMI, for any kind of HDMI activities. Like uh, just, just USB, please stick to that. And also yep. don't use an HBI hub with Ethernet on it. Get a dedicated Ethernet uh, connection as well. Those are those are great points. And I guess to add to that, a couple things. Starting with this USB C hub is separately powered, which is big because otherwise it would be having to power both uh, capture cards, which would maybe eat it. You know, they would heat up more. So. You, if you're going to choose a capture card that isn't this one, just make sure, or I mean, um, a hub that isn't this one, you know, having it be self-powered plugged in externally uh, is, is a pretty big deal. And then yes, that's huge. One, yeah. One other point about cable management, um, you know, with my experience in the broadcast industry, you know, that is huge, you, you know, for trouble, mostly because it looks good, but also because, if you need to troubleshoot something, you need to be able to know the flow of the things. You can't be, if everything's intertwined, you don't know which cable goes where. You get confused about which capture card is the one that's wrong or broken. And so really strong cable management is very important um, for troubleshooting, especially in a live environment. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, what would you like to do next, Ryan? I could pull up OBS or, um, before we go into the YouTube part or... Yeah, um... uh, well, we're not going to go into the YouTube part now, but I, what I want to do, okay. uh, I really quick, I just want to mention that you had, uh, you mentioned that we were going to release a list of all of this equipment. And I think like you're sure. talking about with the powered USB hub, I think that's really mm -hmm. important. And I have had difficulty finding powered USB hubs. Uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to search for for some reason. And uh, yep. so it'll be helpful to have those links. We have decided to collaborate with Zach Hub and use their wiki to, in order to publish all of this information. So in the next month, uh, everyone, we're going to be releasing a ton of information about how to live stream um, and, uh, and privacy concerns when it comes to live streaming and some collaboration tools that we're planning on using for, for Zcash Zeitgeist and stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot of really helpful AV content creator style educational content um, that we'll be providing through the Zach Hub portal. Um, so look for that. And uh, the other thing is uh, in reference to the YouTube um, overview with OBS and streaming from OBS to free to Z, for example, and streaming to YouTube or, or Twitter or anything else, I want to cover all of this in a specific kind of workshop course uh, that I'm going to be developing on Tuesdays at 1800 UTC starting next week. It's going to be a real loose curriculum style course um, that we could potentially turn into some some published tutorial videos and stuff that also go in the wiki. So keep an eye out for that um, starting next Tuesday. We'll all go over OBS and how to use it to broadcast to, to YouTube and free to Z. So Dan, if you want to if you want to switch over to, to OBS now, we can show. Sure what you did once you had all of these uh, hardware inputs. Yeah, let me do, I think we said full screen and then I can bring it up here. So is that working? Yep, I see it. The, okay, the screen cool. for everyone watching, the screen is just gonna be black because he doesn't have the actual inputs going right now. So yes. the, the big black yeah. box at the top is your actual uh, workspace preview of what's being broadcast or, or recorded. Yeah. Um, so again, Ryan, please fill in where I messed out you know, or mess up. You know, this was really, I learned this uh, through Ryan in testing, but basically OBS was running on the computer. Um, everything I just talked about obviously led into, into here and you um, on the left, you would create scenes. And so we created a composite live stream and you can see I'm clicked on it here and it includes three sources. One, Bowcaster, um, that's the brand. This was the audio interface and you could do all your settings and everything through, through here. The second source would have been the camera feed. 
and um, same thing, you know, boom, you could click here, you could uh, choose, this is the capture card right here. You could choose whether it's HDMI or SDI, whether you want it to pass audio or not. Um, and the third source being the presentations, which was that other feed that we discussed previously, same thing, choose the capture card, choose how you want it to come through to you. Um, this, so this was what was mostly running during the live stream, the composite, but we set it up in a way where a second scene would have been just the camera and the audio in case we want, because it was in composite, this was set up as picture in picture, which was, you know, slides, large camera feed, small in the corner. Um, camera only would have made it no slides, large view of camera. Program feed only would have been um, just slides if we wanted those to go large without a camera. And then we had the in-between animation, which uh, is very cool animation made by the Brazil team. And this was playing both in the venue and in between talks in the beginning and after talks. And that we were able to pull this up as its own scene as well. Um, and yeah, maybe Ryan, if you wanted to fill it, I'm sure I missed a few things. You know, you can tweak the settings, you know, during the show, I would have to like, mess with audio some people talk louder than others some people hold the mic closer to their face so i was constantly keeping an eye on audio levels and um yeah this whole section over here maybe ryan if you wanted to yeah i can go to walk me through of it for sure um i was trying to think if there were any gotchas think little little catches that we had when we were setting this up there was often times where obs wouldn't recognize the the device and so we would basically quit OBS, mm -hmm. unplug the, the, the devices, plug them back in, start OBS again, um, kind of seemed to be the, the solution to that, some, some path along there. And then during the yep. event, we had uh, at the lunch break that the capture cards just wouldn't turn on and that we had to yep. shut down everything. And once we powered everything back up, then it, then it worked. So that seems yep. to be the go-to solution. Um, if you for example, if you go to select your camera properties and your camera input uh, card isn't showing there, then then doing a, yeah, right there, that device. If it's not showing or if it doesn't show you a preview, then uh, often you just have to like quit and unplug things, plug them back in and start up again. Um, yep. And so once you have audio working, you can tell because your, your uh, audio mixer levels will be bouncing around. So that's something to look for and make sure that your that your audio is wired up properly. Um, yep. In in here, like what I do for capturing these meetups, I use software uh, that was provided by my with my microphone. But uh, Virtual Cable is another software that that we're going to be using, and, and we'll go through that probably more in one of these workshop sessions. Um, but I, it's really helpful to to wire virtually wire audio around between programs rather than it you can basically act like discord is a microphone to to obs you can act like your your video game system is another input and so you can have all these different inputs coming into obs as if you have your own virtual audio mixing board um, so that's really cool software that that i look forward to playing with more now over to this control panel on the on the right uh, the top stuff, start streaming and manage broadcasts. This is for broadcasting live streaming to RTMP servers specifically to, um, and that is uh, servers like YouTube, um, restream.io, which will ingest a single stream and broadcast it out to multiples. T uh, Twitter live streaming is also this RTMP style. So that's what we would set up here. This is actually connected to the Zcash Foundation, Dan's OBS is connected to the Zcash Foundation, so we can create the events ahead of time in YouTube, in the Zcash Foundation YouTube channel, schedule them, share those links out, and then come into OBS and broadcast to those scheduled live streams. This is super helpful when it comes to promoting things. Yeah. You know, I, I always try to, uh, I always try to make sure that we let people know two weeks in advance it almost never happens, but but I try to give uh, give two weeks notice on these events because uh, it takes a while for word to get out. On the other hand, most live streams that I do on YouTube get most of the viewership in the first 24 hours simply because of time zones and, and the shape of the earth. 
So we, uh, so having those recorded and available afterwards is super important when you're when you're broadcasting in this in this way. So Dan, you can close that that window out. I think that kind of sums that up. Again, I'll go into much more detail in this in the workshops. Cool. So the recording, hold up, the recording is pretty straightforward. Um, that that does recordings of whatever you're broadcasting, whatever is in that preview window. And then um, the last thing is the virtual camera, which is how we broadcast to free to Z. And you can also use this to actually broadcast into Discord or to, to Google or Zoom or anything that has, um, that has your internal camera as the option for the visual input. You can then select OBS virtual camera as the input in, in Google, not in here, but in, in Google uh, or in Discord or free to see. And then anything that shows in your preview window here will be uh, sent out as if it's the camera. So it's a, an actual virtual camera operating on the streaming platforms. So that's pretty cool. You can run both at the same time. You can stream to Restream, which then spits it out to Twitter and Twitch and Kick and YouTube and all of these different things. Uh, you can record with OBS. You can simultaneously do a virtual camera stream to free to Z, um, all while playing your games in Discord. And uh, it's it's pretty slick. OBS is, is is awesome software. It's come a long way in a short amount of time. It is open source, and uh, it's it's becoming very easily to use. And uh, Skylar is saying something to me here. Looking and sounding good. Ability to full size on the slide. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool, Skylar. That's I like not terrible. Not terrible is good. Uh, <laughs> we'll get back to. So that we'll have a lot of interactions with with free to Z in the future, um, and if you're watching on free to Z, that's very cool. Um, we're also we've got got a bunch of people on Discord too. So that kind of sums it up for OBS as far as what I wanted to cover here. Um, during Z Convoses, I was um, I was also streaming from the YouTube um, control room from the live control room into a discord channel is john still here he we lost him no i'm still here of oh, course you are okay you just turned the camera off um so we were live streaming from uh like from the youtube control panel i was into the into the av lounge into this channel where we are now so that anyone who was watching along in the av club could kind of get a behind the scenes view of of what was happening um with the live stream and uh, something that kind of took me by surprise was what John was working on uh, with this with this automatic translation. So like Vicon Z Convosis was in was in Portuguese mostly and a, and a bit in Spanish, and it uh, brought to light this problem that the rest of the world has probably been experiencing for quite some time, and we we need to address it. Oh crap! What has happened? That was weird. Okay, uh, hold on. My downloads. Okay, the recording is going to be a bit strange. Discord is being weird. Anyway, this issue is uh, of the language barrier is what I'm talking about, and we can we are we are building tools to be able to uh, to bridge that gap during live presentations, and I, I think it's all really cool. So, John, can you uh, give us a walkthrough of of what you've been building and how how you're using it, and what we can what we can see in, uh, in the future for it? You're muted. Sorry, there we go. Uh, yeah, I was actually running it over in the other channel. Um, this particular device that I'm running it on has a uh, Chrome HQ here. Oops. Move around. This is why I had you on the phone so we can do this. Now, can you see my screen okay or is it horrible? It's, it's it good. It's fine. It's a computer. We can see it. I can't see All your right. private keys, though. Is that what you're trying to show us? Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> OK, so in this setup, very easily, we've got the stream running on this phone. Can you all see the phone there? That's that's the stream. And it's coming out of the audio into a USB audio interface right here. Um, and that is being fed into 
my other user impromptu and then it is being sent to google translate it's currently i had it paused for a second because chrome just keeps crashing on this particular device and i wanted to be able to show you exactly what it's doing um once it starts doing this we can very easily come to discord and select the share screen uh sorry there it goes you saw it happen <laughs> um when this started happening this started happening at the end of the zcon boses i actually got through most of the talks and so it occurred to me that you need to have you know a somewhat decent device if you're going to be running the translations and sharing the screen um and, and so on and so forth so on this one this was a better one this is hooked up through an hdmi can y'all see that okay yep all right there we go all right okay i'll kind of hold you selfie style there we go um coming out of this guy right here the audio output in the settings it basically just sees it as the hdmi output and the digital um capture card right here and then on your source or on your uh where am i there we go sorry on the other device you set your input as your digital capture basically the microphone in your windows settings i don't have it open right here sound Yes, as you can see right here, digital audio interface. We can't, we can't really see that. If you hold the camera like Sorry. way closer to I'm, the screen, we might be able to. But I'm really not used to the selfie world, guys. Okay, maybe, <laughs> it's maybe all good. like that. Yeah, it's all good. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Fine. Basically, the digital audio interface becomes your microphone source, and so we can have the translator listen on this device. If it's going to work, gosh, I hope so. There we go. And it is listening to Zcon Voses right there, the recording. And so that's basically what I did. This was my exact setup for that particular day. I had the the HDMI capture card with two separate devices. The particular, the exact laptop I had was the one back there that you just saw crash earlier. And that's why I decided, you know, for this one, I was going to just run better devices, but I didn't think to run it for the actual translator. Uh, okay. Now, um, basically, the whole concept is you've got a, a source and you've got the, the receipt, basically, you know. Um, translate and the live stream, or in this case, it was the meeting audio. Um, and you just need to interface it basically, uh, either between the two devices, or I'm gonna show you here in just a second, all inside of one device with the virtual cables like uh, Ryan mentioned. Uh, I have this other sort of cheaper HDMI down converter, which you can just simply, because all we need in this case is the audio. Um, Bluetooth could be used for another sort of a, a gapped medium. This whole concept originally came to mind by playing the audio from one device into the microphone of another device, just air gap that way. Um, and I don't actually have a Bluetooth uh, demonstration here but i do have a little tiny fm transmitter and we can barely see uh just easily see that the interface can just be a radio in this case this is an sdr picking up on the voses that's being transmitted off of this one through this little tiny little transmitter if y'all can see that this is just an fm transmitter uh, that you might like put in your car so you can listen to your phone on your stereo in your car. The audio coming from that transmitter is coming into this computer. It's not running translate simply because it's not that fast of a device, but you could pipe this audio 
coming in. Uh, here, let me, so we can hear it. So you can see, if we turn off the transmitter, we'll get back to the radio. Cool, huh? Yeah, that's really, really okay. cool. I like that. Sorry. The, the, there's different ways to, um, there's, I like that there's all these different ways to do this, like you're pointing out, and that uh, what I would like to see is if we could like boil it down to, to sort of different yeah. packages, uh, not right yeah. at this moment, but you know what I'm talking about in the wiki to have this, this section where it's like, these are the different, depending on the equipment you have, these are your different options. That's, that, that's what I was going to say, you know, like about plausibility and possibility and like, um, yeah, the sky's really the limit when it comes to like, you know, transmitting the data and stuff I was just showing. Uh, yeah, just like radio, basically Bluetooth is radio, Wi-Fi, you know, all of these other things. Now, in this setup, I'll show you last. This is all in one setup. This has, with virtual cable, let me bring it up here on the thing. Here it is, VB Audio software. Uh, there's another one, I think, called virtual audio cable, which I believe is pretty much the exact same thing. But essentially, ooh, what am I doing here? I'm going to zoom out. I'll post links to so these we, in the YouTube description also we and on, on Free to Z and stuff if anyone okay. is watching this and wants to know what, what, what software we're talking about specifically. Yep. Yep. So yeah. So basically, yeah, like it says, it's just a virtual cable that will take the um the input, in this case cable input, and pipe it into a cable output. So my microphone is listening to whatever would be played out of my speakers. In this case, it will be um, YouTube. Now, the issue with that, um, and I'm sorry, I just wanted to mention, when you install this, it sets it up like, so this works automatically. The only issue with it is that you can't monitor your um, uh, in between the cable. So you would be listening, you wouldn't hear anything. You might have to do something like I did before with creating a different Discord account and then monitoring by logging in, you know, with the other account into the server. Um, but there is a little, if you use a mixer, this one is actually just comes with it. It's free, but you can actually monitor the uh, cable and then pipe it to the speakers without affecting the inside piping with the translation. So you can actually hear it, feed it, and then share the screen all on one single device. You would need a so more powerful that's, device to do this, right? Um, that, yeah, th that's why, yeah, this particular one is a, has a Ryzen 5 in it. And the same thing with that one back there, that other one. Those ones have the more powerful uh, processors that I have. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, to do it all on one, yeah, you'd probably want one with a decent amount of RAM and, you know, logic threads. But let's, here, I'll show you right now. We can play it. We can hear it on the device. And we can also feed it internally. And then we can put that. Here, I'll just show you from right here. I won't join the other one. What am I doing right here? Show the screen. And so, all in one device, a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about cables and. Um, <laughs> Man, that's a lot of software. Everything though. I was talking about just a second. And also, there it is. you now could have potentially, you could have potentially the video alongside it in your in your share. So you cool. could have the whole thing. That's so really this cool. seems like kind of like the better deal. I'm yeah. sorry it was like very, very, you know, awkward about moving no. around and stuff. No, no, it's yeah. great. We got a chance to see of like what it, lo what it looks like without just the screen share, which is excellent for this sort of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, I was really trying to keep on the the translations throughout the the talk, excuse me, so far, mm -hmm. and then it started crashing like last time. I was like, man, yeah, I'm not got to pay attention. <laughs> well, for a pilot yeah, program, it, it worked really, device. really well. Um, I think like for these kinds of things, you know, uh, Apple products seem to be kind of recommended at least as far as I know like with video stuff and uh I do have 
a MacBook back there, and I did try out virtual cable like with Windows because it works on Windows and on Mac. Um, but I think I need a different kind of a mixer to move around the audio. When you try to use Google Translate in Safari, um, it I can't let it get my microphone. It I, I read on the internet there are people with other issues. I don't know if it's something special. Um, for some reason, you can have Google Translate and Microsoft Translate apps on an iPhone, and they work mm -hmm. just like with Google. Um, and so, okay, so is sure. it so Chrome that you're using there. then? Chrome typically, yeah, okay. um, on these other devices, yeah, just because uh, it's all, you know, internal. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the uh, browsers won't allow microphone access in Chrome and okay. Edge, mm, yeah. they do. <laughs> okay. So and that's why that's why those were going on on the Windows devices, yeah, with the cool. Edge and Chrome. Cool, that's awesome. That's awesome input and feedback for sure. And uh, there's also like there's a possibility to take the video output from your translator window into OBS, take the video from YouTube into OBS, and then you could superimpose the text of the translation over the, yep. the live video rebroadcast like to the Zcash Brazil channel, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, yeah, and somebody mentioned that recently from from down there, like some captions, something mm -hmm. like that. Would yeah, been, absolutely. Yeah. And so with like, we can, yeah. yeah, so if we're broadcasting Zcon 4 on this on the foundation site, we could have Portuguese translations going with the video and the original audio uh, out to to the Zcash Brazil site, uh, to a YouTube channel and stuff like that. Um, it's a it's a big project, and I think that it's really cool. It's sort of revolutionary. So, thanks for your help on that, John. It's and and the inspiration. Yeah. They took the initiative on that. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. Like you said, just trying to kind of streamline it and you know get you know methods. Yep. Yeah, it's it brings a whole new level of interest for people who have a difficulty understanding the language, just don't understand the language, can't speak the language. You find yourself. I found myself looking at my phone and reading along. And uh, like now you're reading along, which it also raises the, the level of concentration and interest in what's being what's being discussed and what's being presented, and uh, and it made these these this content consumable by someone who otherwise would have to wait for for the translations. And we are working on that. Um, I'm working with Vito to get the uh, proper Portuguese subtitles on all of these presentations, and then we'll be uh, forming a sort of as automated as possible translation process to get the live videos edited into individual talks so we can publish those with proper uh, source language subtitles and with English translations and maybe some others. Um, so keep your eye out for all of those. Those videos should be coming out within the, over the next month or so. Um, and then I'm also hoping that we can get some, some of these Zcon highlights like I'm doing for all of the old Zcons done. I'm hoping that we can do those for um, for all of the, the Zcon voices as well. And this is stuff that uh, I'm really, really impressed with how Zcash Brazil is is working. And like that whole team, major props to you all. This is really setting the bar high and uh, and and appropriately so for all of the the Zcon voices and for the Zcash communities around the world. So thank you for, for being our, uh, our sort of model on this, our, our sort of crash course. And there was no crashing. So uh, yeah, I, I, it was, the whole event was a total win. And um, I've, I've been here yeah. with Zcon since the beginning, and this was just another step up. It, it really it held that banner proudly. So well played, everyone. Um, we also, is Paul here? Is Paul on the call? Um, if Paul, if you wanted to jump on, uh, what we went through on, um, the, on, on the live stream stuff today, I would really like to do a similar deep dive into podcast production next month. And so uh, Paul has been working on his podcast, which is really fantastic, and I was hoping that he could talk a little bit about that right now and that uh, he could show, tell us a little bit about his tech setup teasing into the next month where we can do a a bigger, more full format um, deep dive into this stuff. Uh, but Paul, if you if you can, then uh, I'd, I'd love to hear what you're working on.
No. He might. He might be. He's in here. There might be an issue. Mike. Those mic things. <laughs> Camera on? Does it? Did I? Does he have speaking access? He should. Let's see. Looks like he just messaged Rolls. saying he's suppressed. Oh. Yep, you are here. Okay, uh, Paul, if you leave and come back in, you'll. I, I just fixed that. Once again, it was the same problem as before. I've decided to stop. Oh, just a little Discord housekeeping. Um, I've decided to stop removing these speaker permissions from people after the meetups and and. Uh, and our weekly meetings and things. So in addition to having a few moderators in our Discord now, uh, we also have a bunch of people who have speaking privileges, can turn their cameras on in the lounge. And uh, I encourage any of you to, to have calls in the ZFAV Club Discords in the lounge and stuff um, anytime that you want. And, and yeah, hi, Paul. Good to see you. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. There's some fantastic presentations. I'm super impressed with everything that you guys are doing. Amazing stuff. So good. Cool. Awesome. Um, good to hear. So let me know. Tell us what you're working on with, with Pretty Good Policy here. It's a fantastic podcast. I'm really, really uh, impressed and, and excited to see this happening. And, and uh, yeah, please take it away. Well, thanks. Um, I'll do it real quick. I know we don't have a lot of time, but um, hopefully you can see my screen there that I'm sharing. And this is the YouTube site for the PGP Pretty Good Policy for Crypto podcast. We have done, well, we've published six, but there are two episodes that we did just this week that are pending release, um, probably come out this weekend and be publicized on Monday, but uh, they'll hit the YouTube channel sometime soon. Um, so, yeah, so we try to create for each podcast we do, we try to create at least three assets, a short around 45 seconds or so for easy sharing on social. We have the full episodes here. And then we have clips that are usually under 15 minutes. You can publish up to 15 minutes on LinkedIn, which is nice to like take an excerpt that is very focused on a specific topic from the podcast and put it out there. So uh, yeah, it's it's gone really well. We do the entire thing um, ourselves. So uh, this is probably the part that's most interesting to, to you all. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned before on this podcast, in this uh, meeting that I have, I have experienced some, some experience in video, probably not as much as some of you, but almost all of this gear was stuff that I had. Um, and the only thing I've purchased for this is a light kit. So maybe about $300. And then, uh, you know, we, we use a service to like distribute the podcast, but the amount of money we're spending on this is trivial. It's very little. And um, that's pretty important right now, as you can imagine. We are being very budget conscious. So everything on this table was used, except maybe two HDMI cables that are extra in there. Here is the setup that you know it went from one to the other. This is everything set up. It takes me about an hour to get everything set up and ready to start recording. And I actually like to have a little bit more time than that. Can break it down in less than 45 minutes, but it takes a good hour and 15 minutes to get really well prepared. And then, um, you know, I'm just using two capture cards uh, and running two OBS instances to record. And um, I use a, you know, a little mixer here and the audio is recorded on the mixer as well as on the, of course, the videos. And um, one thing I wanted to mention back here, going back to the setup, is initially I didn't do this just because I was trying to get everything going and, and working my way through it. But in this setup, I actually have a full separate recording of both video and audio. So I've got the Zoom here recording a backup audio. I've got two cheaper video cameras uh, that, you know, I would hate to actually have to use, but just because I don't like the quality of the of the picture. But yeah, so they're, they're there in the case of some failure. So hopefully I would have avoided any catastrophic failure by having a little bit of backup ready to go. And uh, I'm using a, a relatively new tool. I don't know how many of you would be familiar with it, but let me just 
pop over to that real quick. One sec. I can get my setup going here. Oops. Okay. So um, this is a, a tool called Descript. And um, it actually, I found it to be super nice for this type of production. It is, of course, limited in many ways uh, compared to what you might do with Premiere or something else. But um, for a podcast, it is just right on point because it's AI powered, AI powered in being able to take in the video and audio and produce a very high quality transcript. Now we still have to go through the transcript word by word and check everything and get rid of all the well filler words. But that's another nice feature of this in that it has a lot of automated features for like eliminating all the filler and all the stuff that you really don't want in a high quality transcript. So it saves a lot of time that we would otherwise have to spend. I still probably spend three to four hours minimum on each episode going through the uh, transcript and cleaning it. Then we go in and we add markers. So all of these markers that we add, like here you can see a marker introduction and then you know various places we add markers. That all, when you export it to YouTube, it goes directly to chapters. It creates those setting those uh, timestamps inside the description, so that you automatically have chapters in YouTube. That's awesome. It just make yeah, it just makes the process super nice. Um, and uh, you know, you have to go through a little bit of work to create some sequences initially. You know, just like you would in any kind of multicam setup, you have to go through and create your multi-cam setups, get your audio and video synced. And, but once you do that, you know, it, everything works quite well. Um, then let's say after you've done this whole process, you've got the entire episode done, it is very easy. I would say almost trivial to create, like you could just come in here, create a section like this, say new composition, or, or um, copy and, and um, where is it? I duplicate to new composition and it pops you into a new composition where you can customize it. So here is an example of creating one of these shorts, which is again, I mean, it's like super trivial and they have features like uh, the green screen. So for the short, I had a green screen, take out the background, add uh, the waveform, add the you know, live text. Um, it is just, all there. Uh, I, I have to say, I think that they're quite brilliant with this tool. And um, that's really, and I really love it. Yeah, that's really amazing. Is there a cost to this app? Yeah, there is. I think it's maybe it's cheap right now. I bet it won't stay that way. But I mm -hmm. think it's like $300 a year for the pro account, which yeah. gives you full access to everything. Cool. Yeah, but it looks like it's again, worth it. It's well, amazing. I've been messing with well these with uh, like the the short uh, the short vertical video content lately with the Zcon highlights and and trying Cap Cut and and DaVinci Resolve and a few different tools, and I haven't seen anything like this. This is this is incredible. Yeah, I I um, can't speak highly enough of it. I just I, I really think it's uh, it's outstanding. And um, once we get everything out here and on the on the full episode, we go in. Actually, I'm just going to switch over to um, a different view here to uh, the studio. And this will pop up. So if you go into the content um, and subtitles, you see that for, for the full episodes, which are not being shown, oh, I guess I need to go over another page here. Yeah, so there you see that like, we end up adding um, 17 additional languages for the full episodes. So I, uh, because Descript does such a good job with the transcript and it does the timings and everything, you can export the SRT or VTT files. So I can, I can take that and I can run it through subtitle edit, which uses Google Cloud Translate. And then I can just, it's still a repetitive process, but I can pump out the, um, the different transcripts for, or different subtitles for uh, all the different languages and add those. So yeah, we're trying incredible. to make it as accessible as possible. 
you know, and we really are shooting to do this at the highest level. I mean, this is already, we've got some super big names in the policy world. And I think it's just going to go up from there. Once people start to see what we're doing, I think we're going to be able to very, very soon have um, members of Congress on and others on who are going to want to talk about crypto policy. And from just a strategy perspective, we do this not just about ECC or Zcash or privacy. We are talking about crypto policy generally, but this gives us an opportunity to, to really put in our thoughts and um, very subtly talk about the issues that are important to us while helping other people spread their messages too. So it's a, it's a good strategy that's working very well. I completely agree. I think it's a fantastic strategy. And I saw this announcement on Twitter. I think that you had translated to like 17 other languages. And I was just like, what? How? Tell me more. I need that. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, so and like I, I mentioned earlier in, in this meetup that uh, I'm working with Vito on tran getting these translations. Um, yeah. And then also we're going to be doing uh, shorts and like highlight real type things from from the Zcon voices as well and the future Zcon voices. So I want to have a, a strategy that we can sort of bottle and and uh, and ship. And so this is I this love is that. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, what I would, and that cutout I... thing you did too for your for your presentation was awesome as well. Like, <laughs> but, oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm just using OBS here, which is kind of nice on my on my computer. But um, yeah, I would love to when I get a few minutes make that translation process a batch job or something so I can just like click a button and it will pop out all the different languages. I, I think that should be possible, but I just haven't had enough time to look at it yet. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then with our with all of our Zcash ambassadors uh, in, in around the world, then we have people to fact to like double check all of these translations and stuff, which so. would be fantastic because I have no idea if they're good. <laughs> but you know, I what I do know and I have some confidence in it because we're starting from a very high quality transcript. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted oh, to add, and no, 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 we're out of time, but um, I presented all that, not just to tell you all about it, but to get feedback. And, uh, and especially with a group like this, I know you all have so much knowledge and experience. You could probably have seen things I just showed you that you think make me look very stupid. So I, I would love <laughs> to uh, get um, any feedback or ideas that you might have on ways we can do what we're doing better. Yeah. Awesome. That's like that's absolutely why we why we're here. And what I'd like yeah. to do then, uh, I've already mentioned um, in Discord and I think in this meetup as well that next month they, for the April meetup, I would really like to focus on pod, pod, podcast production and go in depth into what you're doing. That would give us a real good chance to uh, to to talk more collaboratively. And uh, with Joel as well, who's doing the Zcash podcast on the Digital Cash Network, um, and we can yeah. see if we can get a couple other podcasters in here to so that we can get. Uh, some various perspectives and some different so different methodologies. Yeah, I mean, there's things I didn't even have time to go over there. Mm -hmm. Like once you get the audio in, you can do leveling and studio sound and all. So, yeah, so there's just a ton that we could get into, and I think we would all learn from each other if we did more of this. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. next month, um, it's uh, I don't remember the exact date, but uh, last Thursday of April, we'll we'll get together and we'll talk specifically about podcast production. And, and the tech Sounds and the, the software, the hardware, everything. I'm super curious about it because I've never done that, mm. that side of broadcasting before. Um, it looks like, or it sounds like you do all post-production. You don't do any live streaming of your podcast. Right. No, I think for what we're doing, um, the speakers are, are very sensitive about the mm -hmm. content and yeah. we want to make sure they have full confidence that we don't publish anything until they approve. Our goal is to make them look good and not to create controversy or, or try to capture any misstatement or something. Um, so yeah, we, we do full post, but that also allows us to create a, a very high quality product too, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very good points. And, uh, point. and something that we can t definitely talk more about um, that decision of broadcasting or, or editing and um, all of this good privacy and consent stuff. We can talk about yeah. that next month. Um, and in the in the Tuesday meetings uh, in those workshops, so we can we can definitely play with some of this tech, some of the software specifically, and and some alternatives. Uh, and then everyone, the I wanted to point out that on Wednesdays we are doing uh, weekly meetings, and in those meetings it's kind of 
it's kind of fly by the seat of our pants style where we're just taking it with whatever's happening that week. Uh, yesterday we did a prep for this, for this meetup. Um, the very first weekly meeting actually happened before the last meetup. And so that, that sort of started as a, as a test for this to a way to kind of shake out the, the loose change. And, uh, and in the, in between we talk about anything from, uh, from like the wikis or, ideas with like the Zcon zeitgeist and the, the minor grant that's out there something else to look for if you if you don't know what i'm talking about there's new discord channels um to cover this zcash zeitgeist project that i'm pitching to zcap as part of the minor grants program and uh, i think there's a lot of potential in that project for for the av club to collaborate and i'm really looking forward to it um, and there's money on the table too because it is a grant and i have excluded the, the uh, organizers of the Zcash Foundation Audio Video Visual Club from gaining any of those funds. So uh, please join us, participate, collaborate with us, and uh, make some Zec in the process. And I will be paying that out in Zec. I'm not denominating anything in USD. Um, cool. I think that that went really, really well. That was a fantastic meetup. We got a real good overview. I hope everyone feels like they have a better understanding of how our live streams will currently work and where we're going to take it. Um, things to look forward to, I guess the main thing is the wiki. Like that's my main focus in April. I'm going to be focusing on getting the wiki off the ground with a lot of really good information that we've all been discussing and, and researching and gathering here. I'm also going to be continuing the Zcon Highlights project that is uh, slow going. There's a lot of videos there. There's like 115 Zcon videos. So far, I'm obviously not going to get to all of those before Zcon 4. So this is probably a two-year project, and I'm taking it slow because I want to do all of this research on like proper best practices for publishing and, and for encoding and, and everything. So I'm uh, definitely tripping a little bit here and there. With We had some frame rate conversion issues going on, and I'm learning how to do vertical videos with all of the copy and stuff and this software that Paul just showed is fantastic and that'll be really helpful there. Um, so yeah, lots going on and I appreciate all of you for coming and if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Um, I probably should say like subscribe and like the video. So do that, follow us on Twitter. Um, check out free to Z if you haven't, if you're watching on Discord or you're watching on YouTube right now, go to free to Z.com, free to Z.cash. And, uh, and check it out. It's a really, really awesome community resource that is being built and utilized by the Zcash communities around the world. And I'm really happy about it. I'm really excited about it. Um, Dan, anything else to add? No, I just appreciate everybody being here. Um, at the end there, like Paul, that setup was very cool. I look forward to going in more depth uh, at the next meetup. And um, yeah, keep an eye out for the Zcon Voices content coming out with, you know, individual clips and individual talks and translations. And um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody for being here. Thanks, everyone. Catch you online. Have a good week. <laughs>